Okay, welcome. Thank you uh, for, for coming, everyone. Um, for those of you who haven't met, I'm Ian McDonald. I'm the artist in residence and area head of ceramics uh, here at Cranbrook, just right down the way. Um, and of course, uh, we are all here tonight because we're extremely happy that Ruby Neri is here with us. Uh, Ruby has been in the studios uh, today, uh, all day today, and she'll be with us again tomorrow. And uh, I know the students have um, had a great time with her, and we really appreciate her insight and, and candor. Um, so I'll briefly touch on Ruby's career, um, and to do that is, is the only way to address the many successes she's had in her career. So I'll just touch on a few of them. Um, uh, and she's had many successes since receiving her MFA in painting, correct, from UCLA in uh, 1998. Uh, she's had multiple solo exhibitions um, with David Kordansky Gallery, where she's represented in Los Angeles. Um, she's had solo exhibitions with Paula Anglum in San Francisco, and soon we'll have a show at the, uh, the Berkeley Museum and Pacific Archive at UC Berkeley. Yes, coming up? Yeah. Uh, other recent exhibitions include the Everson Art Museum, the Aldrich Contemporary uh, Art Museum, the Oakland Museum of California, and the San Francisco Art Institute. This is just to name a few. Uh, her work has also been featured in the New York Times, Art in America, Los Angeles Times, and most recently was featured in Vitamin C, Clay and Ceramic in Contemporary Art from Fight on Press. Uh, on a personal note, um, I have always been struck by Ruby's work and her ability to simultaneously uh, embrace and sidestep ceramic conventions uh, while using ceramics as a vehicle to approach sculpture and glaze surfaces as a vehicle to address painting and mark making. So please help me welcome Ruby Neri. Hi. Uh, so after visiting with everyone in the ceramics and, um, department, and thank you for welcoming he me here, I was sort of like thinking like, wow, like when I do my lecture, it's going to be like really, it just seems really now after having these conversations earlier today, it seems really like my work is sort of like a lot of what I was talking about in terms of like, n like, I don't know, just issues, like almost like negative issues, it seemed like what my work is like based on in ceramics. So it's kind of like funny to um, come back to these images and look at them after talking with all of you. Because uh, I think that when you come and you talk to people about their work, you like immediately, of course, are like thinking about your own work. And it's like really, really important, I feel, to do that, to have conversations with other people about their work. So um, anyhow, this is, this is all work that I'm going to show you. My, my, my images are kind of um, just sort of like pots and stuff like that. So it's hard to sort of like grasp the um, sort of like the scope of what I've done because I haven't always done ceramics. So these are just like recent. This is all stuff from like 2015. Um, and so this piece I did in like 2016. And it's really like a, pretty much what my focus is right now is just sort of like these complex, larger scale pieces that I then airbrush under glaze. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of different sort of like mark making and um, sort of surface applications. But I don't feel that like what I do is necessarily that outside of, like I'm not, I don't really feel myself as like, you know, expanding on ceramics in any way. I just feel like actually I'm kind of like going backwards when I think about it, when I talk to a lot of people that do ceramics, I'm sort of like actually like going back and reinvestigating a lot of things that have already been done. Um, but I'm not really like conscious. I sort of mostly just focus on ideas and images that I want to, that are interesting to me. And um, I'm really drawn to, uh, the airbrush and like, so all of my stuff is either used with a paint gun or an airbrush to sort of decorate these pieces. And these are a few of the recent ones that I've just done within the past few months. So a lot of my imagery is rather, yeah, fairly sexual and it's also sort of like this complex sort of almost surreal, you know, it's all very like wrapped up in a lot of different sort of ideas of dependency and like, you know, just uh, human relationships, basically. But because I feel, it's sort of odd to me that I'm only making female forms right now, whereas I wasn't always, it's sort of like more recently that they've become like solely like female specific. And, you know, back in the 90s, I did a lot of graffiti. And so I think that a lot of my mark making comes from graffiti and like doing like street art. And I think that's a lot of 
the reasons why I don't use other materials anymore and I've sort of like primarily I've come to sort of like focus on clay alone because it's sort of like a material that I can immediately focus on, I can immediately build with and sort of like see through and finish fairly quickly. Um, I build and make things like, a, you know, fairly, I like work through ideas and work through forms really fast. Um, so this is like a recent piece. These are all within the past like three months. Um, so this is about 38 um, inches. So it's like a little bit over three feet. Um, and so that's sort of like a close up of some of the th things that I'm doing. Um, I don't really, so I was sort of like working with pots and sort of like the idea of pots, but I was mostly interested in just finding a structure that I can work within that's easy for me to convey sort of like my mark making. And I didn't really want to think about the conceptual element of like making objects so much anymore. I wanted to just sort of like have access to a larger, like a larger form that I can sort of like paint on as I would a painting, but sort of like be removed from the idea of like a painting as a two dimensional piece. Um, so this is like the interior of that pot that you just saw is sort of like a head at the bottom of it. Um, so that's a lot of the reasons why I make large scale ceramics is because I like the scale to be um, sort of referential to painting, like on the scale of a painting and sort of like my body is sort of like making marks on a canvas in a sense. And I feel that because I have all these other interests and I've done so many other things in terms of like painting or object making that I have a lot of those ideas put into the clay. And you know, it's weird because I don't really have a background in ceramics, so I don't really get hung up, I feel, on like the history of, or the idea of like what a vessel is. You know, I just, I don't really care about that stuff. I'm just sort of like making things to suit sort of like my imagery and the interests of my imagery and sort of like the, the, the um, complexity of the, the material itself, just sort of like manipulating clay is like far more interesting to me, I think. So this is about 40 inches. Um, it's almost, it's like three, it's a little bit more than three and a half feet. Um, and these all pieces were all in um, New York recently for this, um, it wasn't a show, I did like a solo booth at a fair. And um, so that was the first time that I had like a large body of work in New York for the first time. And that, that was really exciting. That was just like two weeks ago. Um, but a lot of people, um, talk about my imagery as being like really aggressive, <laughs> which I think is really funny or sort of like, I don't know, like the female form and, or in terms of it just being like really sexually aggressive, which I think is interesting because a lot of, or it's sort of like this hypersexuality. It's not so much that they're sexual as so much as that they're really frenetic or like frantic in a sense. And, um, I think that for a lot of people, these things are sort of like off-putting or what have you, or they're too much, but I, I haven't really, I've just sort of recently been like getting some feedback on my imagery as being like fairly intense, but it, it's almost sort of like the everyday struggle as opposed to sort of like the sexual element of it. It's more about sort of like life in general. And um, it, is, it is all pretty self-referential, I feel. And that, that is one of the reasons why I was wanted to only work in clay is because I felt that I want, I had the need to make more personal work. Whereas before when I was just solely focused on object making, I was really removed, I think, from myself within my work because it was sort of like this idealized um, ideas that I was working on about sculpture and sort of traditional object making. And I sort of wanted to step back from that and um, like make actually intensely personal work. And so I think that this came out of that. And I've never, I don't think in my entire life have I ever made such sort of like raw pieces as this and sort of like put myself out there. And um, it's, been, it's been pretty nice. I like it. So these are some more of the pieces. So I sort of like combine the imagery with the whole 3D element where they change quite radically from front to back. Um, so this is like a woman with her hair. So these are more like mid-range, like uh, 28 inches or 30 inches. Um, 
but oh, this is fairly small. This is like 16 inches. But um, so that's the sort of like the install in New York and where they're all together. Some of them are larger than others. And um, that's another shot. But it's sort of funny to like talk about ceramics and vessel making with ceramicists because I feel <laughs> it's like it's a little bit like nerve wracking. But because um, like I feel like what I do is so simplistic. Um, so this is a large piece that I actually ended up destroying because it was sort of structurally cracked. I couldn't fix the cracks enough to keep it. But this is about five and a half feet tall. Um, but it's all like coil built and, you know, I have a lot of influences from my past about sort of like this lo-fi kind of like amusement park, like fiberglass sort of interest. And it all, I think that the ceramic element, like the shiny glazes and what have you really apply well to that sort of interest of mine of just sort of like, you know, cheap sculptures or what have you. And like ready-mades is really appealing to me. So this is sort of like when I first started making the larger pieces at Long Beach State. Um, so this is like, I think that was like six, six, like six feet, six inches when it was unfired. And that's my daughter. <laughs> so this is just like um, really basic, like coil built forms that I'm working on. And then I, I really like a, um, like a dark clay body with like a white slip on top of it so I can carve back into the dark clay body and then these are I'll show you a picture of that piece finished later on I think these are the really early ones I was doing in like 2015 where I was sort of like investigating it was really hard for me to work at this scale because I hadn't really done anything like this before these are only about three feet tall but these are first the pieces that I was doing with sort of like arms for handles and hair for handles and I was sort of like playing on like just like mugs and like pots um, this is a piece from like 2016, I guess, I think. Um, and it, they started to get more complex just unto themselves, just in terms of how far I could push the clay. Uh, but it's all sort of like really organic. Like I don't really plan a lot, you know, I just sort of like follow what is happening with the clay or I try to like not control the clay as much as possible. I find that like when you start like trying to sort of make clay do what you want, it doesn't really work. And so I sort of go with like how the shape is just forming naturally. And sometimes I'll make drawings, but not, it's fairly uncommon. So this thing is like five feet tall. This is like my studio now in LA, but like where I am in LA right now, I don't have a kiln. Um, I just like make the pieces there. That's my old dog that passed away last year. Franny, I miss her. But um, so I make the pieces in this space and then they get shipped, they get driven in a truck when they're leather hard down to Long Beach State and I fire them there, which is sort of crazy. But um, it's worked pretty well so far and Tony, the guy that runs Long Beach is really, really amazing and lets me do this. And um, we time it really well in terms of like when the students aren't using the kiln so much. So it's sort of like on this schedule and it, it actually works out really well because the distance to Long, I can't really like go to Long Beach and make work there. It just takes like way too long. Um, so these are some of the pieces that are at Long, that were at Long Beach. Uh, so it's kind of like a kiln shot just from the inside. So there's a lot of like things that are influencing me with these, like the imagery is like a lot of like Neolithic, like archaic forms, like goddess pieces and then, so it sort of like crosses over a lot of different, just sort of iconic objects, you know, throughout like mankind is really influential. I'll just pick up on really, just sort of like anything like from pop culture can influence what I've been doing or just, I don't really like have an agenda in terms of where I'm getting my influences at all. And a lot of it comes outside, from outside of ceramics. You know, I don't really think, look at ceramics I don't really know that much about ceramic art. It's not just because 
I think because only because I went to school doing so many different things and that was sort of like the time and the place when I was really like pursuing a lot of like artists as influences. And so um, I, nowadays I just don't know that much about ceramic art. Sometimes I, I get into it, um, but I don't really look at art in general. <laughs> so this is that piece finished. The one. Um, so I use a lot of, um, I do a lot, it basically is like spray paint. I mean, uh, some people were like, had a hard time telling me if it was spray paint. That's sort of one of the reasons why I made them so glossy is to be like, oh, you know, no, this is ceramic or whatever. But not that I really can't, like care that much, but I think that for people that were interested in the pieces, it sort of helped them to really like identify it within ceramics by having it glossy. But this is a fairly matte piece that doesn't have a lot of shine. Um, but as you know, it's just like underglaze, um, so it's matte. So this is like a studio shot um, at night before those pieces were done. And then this is just sort of like me making them. I have a lot of like, I keep a lot of images of just the processes of making things. I think that it's really beautiful and like helpful to sort of like have a lot of the steps um, recorded, I think just for myself. So these are um, just close-ups. This is sort of like details of different pots. So I do a lot of like carving. Sometimes I do more carving than not, just in terms of mark making with lines. And I do a lot of like literal like painting with the slip on the dark clay body, which I really, really love. But I kind of go back and forth in terms of like having an entirely white base or not having a white base. Um, it varies. But I mean, I find that like airbrushing is just a lot of freedom and um, I don't really like a lot of painterly, like brush mark making is really unappealing to me for some reason. I mean, I was talking to someone about, or maybe a few people, how I don't like glaze per se. I don't really like glaze very much. Like the idea of like a covered sort of object is not um, really appealing to me. I like having like everything available visually, like the clay body itself, like the clay and like the, um, the mark making, like the differentiation between the, the slip and the clay body is really important to me. So there's a lot of like things about the clay itself that I need to have present. So I don't really like a lot of like heavy opaque coverage with glaze at all. So these are just some drawings that sort of like have influenced my um, imagery. Uh, that one's fairly old. So these are small. I don't draw so much anymore. Um, I mean, no, that's not true. I mean, I draw a lot, but I don't really make sort of like studies of actual pieces, I guess, is what I'm doing, saying. Um, this is the first ceramic piece I did in 2005, like since high school. And it was a long time ago, but it took me a long point, a long time to get from like just making the one-off ceramic thing to actually like making only ceramics. Um, so this is the first thing I made. I was teaching art to kids and they had a kiln. And so I was like, oh, I'm gonna make something out of clay. And then like, that's just like acrylic paint. Um, it's just, like purple paint on it. These are some of the tableau pieces I was doing in like 2014. So this is before I was, before what I'm doing now. So I was making sort of like sculpture up until very recent that was not entirely within ceramics. It was sort of like all this other stuff. Um, but it was getting more and more edging towards ceramics towards the end. So this is from like 2014. I was making these sort of like tableau pieces. I called them tableaus. And they were kind of, you know, tableau is sort of like a painterly term. It's sort of like pictorial and implies a pictorial and um, or sort of like a diorama maybe of like objects. But I was really, really, really obsessed with the sort of emotive quality of objects and what sort of like their relationship, their relationships between each other and sort of like the emotional sort of energy that objects place among themselves can create. And um, so I just wanted to make a couple forms and things and have them in this setting and just basically see how they jive together. And, a lot of this is about painting for me, you know. Um, 
it's basically a sort of like a physical painting in a sense. It's sort of like I'm drawing on like really fundamental elements of like painting, like diagonals and verticals and horizontals and what have you. And so I really enjoyed making these. Um, and I think this one, I think this one's all ceramic. A lot of these tableaus had like other materials, but this one is ceramic, but I didn't, it's like some of them have actual paint on them. Some, it has glaze. So um, this is, I was also doing these sort of like life-size figures um, that incorporated s clay, like ceramic elements before I sort of like, also before I switched over to just making ceramic work by itself. So the legs of the girl and the shorts are plaster, and then the upper is clay. And then that kind of like lightning rod thing is clay also. And then my husband is a really good woodworker, so <laughs> he would build like the bases for me and stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, I really, really sort of, sometimes I just like miss like making work like this. And it's sort of like, I sort of romanticize like just the, the figurative, this is like the sculptural element of like, or the freedom of not being within the genre of ceramics is really nice. Cause like, I feel like sculpture is like actually one of the broadest forms of art making you could work within. Cause you can sort of like, everything can be kind of like rounded up into like an object or a sculpture um, in a sense. And so in that sense, it was really freeing. You know, I kind of stopped painting for, because of the idea of like, I was just so inundated by the history of painting and like painting was just so like the dogma of painting and like everyone's like sort of like words about painting was really like oppressive to me, like just a painting. And I find that like making a sort of a successful painting is actually really difficult. And um, there's all this other stuff about paint that I enjoy a lot more that doesn't have to do with painting. And so that's one of the reasons why I stopped making painting. And I think that for me, I still sort of romanticize about going back to sort of like the idea of just sculpture and using different materials. But I was really, really, really tired of doing like armatures and fabricating. And I just wanted to like make something out of one material finally. Um, so this is another one of the tableau pieces. And again, like that framework is like oil paint on clay. But I mean, I really like doing these. Some of them are really quiet and sort of contemplative. And But this is sort of like what I was talking about in terms of it being really removed and like not so personal. Like even the woman's head, like her eye, her bangs are like covering her eyes. Like a lot of the figures and also in that, in that full figure, there was like a lot of um, just sort of like like emotional removal, like, like hidden. Um, like a lot of the girls had hair in front of their eyes and just sort of literally removed from the viewer, from the audience. And so this is like one of the reasons why I wanted to break free and just sort of like make something that was just sort of like a free for all as opposed to this sort of like, this is really like object based and like had a lot of like language that went with it. And I was sort of like tired of sort of making these, having to make all these relationships and sort of like think about, you know, what went well with this and what went well with that and, you know, making these compositions. And although I feel like th these were really successful and I, w you know, I think about going back to them, but I don't necessarily have to. Um, but yeah, this is all ceramic also. So some of the tableaus weren't all ceramic, but with like paint instead. And I, in some of these, I was also talking about someone about bisqueware. Like, I really love bisqueware, so like, <laughs> I think the two lighter forms are just like unglazed bisque, bisque pieces. You know, just like, it's really sort of like you never see bisqueware anywhere, just like by itself. And um, I actually really like it. It's kind of like the beginnings of something, and it's always a sort of like open ended for that reason. There's no like, there's nothing like. It can always like go on from where it is. And so these pieces, I still make these pieces. Um, they're kind of like mishmash figures from like a lot of different, I used to use the wheel a lot. So I do a lot of like throne forms and then build off of that and um, make these figures. And I still do once in a while. I haven't in a long time, but um, and I would treat them in all different ways. Like this one has like ink. It actually has some glaze. I think the arms are glazed, like yellow. 
but I think this is like cone 10 or something. And then I apply like ink, like India ink, and just like colored inks. And it's like, you know, thrown stuff with like some coil and like, it's all sort of like, they're sort of made from other remnants and they're kind of like babies, like they're not very big. Um, they're sort of about 24 inches or smaller. So these are some others. So the one on the right is like cone 10 with oxides. And then the one on the left is like all oil paint. So I use a lot of oil paint on the ceramic, on clay, which I love. It's like incredible. Like uh, it leaves this really matte surface, you know, because like the oil is absorbed into the clay and then it leaves the pigment on the surface. And it's just sort of like this luminous, really rich material. Um, so these are some others. So the one on the left is cone 10 and then the one on the like reduction or something. And then the one on the right is all oil paint. Um, but I miss doing these. I mean, it's funny because I get like so busy making like a body of work and then like, it's kind of like, I have like no time to just like make like things that are just like fun or not that like what I do isn't fun, but it's sort of like, oh, like I totally forgot about making these things. They're really, it was really nice because I would throw a bunch of stuff and then I would like have to use it up at the end of the day. So I'd like make these and it'd be kind of like leftover stuff. So this is really like mixed media. It's just like, I don't even know what's on there. And then there's like splatter paint. And then this is sort of like a recent one with just like glaze. I mean, not glaze, like under glaze, but um, with the airbrush. But there's something about these that I love too. Um, they're kind of like, I did this whole series of like heads, like really massive heads and sort of treated them all differently as well. Like this is obviously high fire, I think, fired. And then that's just paint, I think like spray paint and acrylic. Um, but they're kind of like tribal, like, um, what is it? <laughs> I don't know, but they're just kind of funky. And then these are the first ones that I was doing that had um, airbrushed glaze. And they're very sort of like reminiscent of the sort of like surreal realism that I was doing with like the figurative ones that had like s um, plaster legs. But I just like, I really got tired of like what I said about the armatures. I just really wanted to cut out a lot and just give myself a really narrow place to work within. And so, you know, a lot of people ask me like, why are you making pots? Or like, why are you making these vessels and what have you? And I mean, to be honest, I don't even really like think about like the history of making pots or like it does not apply at all to what I'm doing. Like I'm just completely like using this to sort of do my mark making, like literally. Um, and it doesn't really come up as anything that important for me. Like I don't really apply the, the sort of like spiritual element of, you know, what a pot is or like the history of pots to what I do. Um, although I really love that, but it's sort of like, they're so like non-functional. They're basically like objects. And I, I just sort of want it to be in this nether world of like being between a lot of mediums and a lot of like the cutoffs of, that we give the mediums. Like, you know, oh, is that a sculpture? Oh, is that ceramic? Oh, is that the painting? Like, I just don't wanna be anywhere in particular. And I find it really hard. And a lot of people like, don't like it when you do that. Um, I find, you know, like people really want you to like lay claim to what something is. And so they're definitely sculptures for me in a sense, you know, but paint, <laughs> like paintings as well. Um, so this is like one of the ones that I made recently um, that has no handles. But I got really like sort of like involved in sort of, um, what is it? Just sort of like, not craft, but like folk imagery not that long ago. There's like a few artists in Sweden, like my husband is Swedish and he would sort of like show me just like a few people that make, like this woman that made these things in, in Sweden, or just sort of like 
outlier artists that you don't hear about that often and like some things are just like so incredible out there um, that I find influenced me a lot. Another bit huge influence for me obviously is my background because I come from the Bay Area and my dad is a really well-known artist from there and I grew up with all the people that were making funk ceramics so I have to talk about that because it's a huge interest of mine and a big love of mine is sort of like the people like my dad's generation and like like I grew up with like Richard Shaw's kids and like I know him like family and like Robert Hudson's kids and um, you know Peter Volkus and was always a part of you know my, my dad's life and so there's like a whole there's the whole world that I sort of like grew up in um, that sort of like took me a long time to grapple I think as a younger artist like it was really hard for me to sort of find my own way in a sense, you know, coming from that. And I feel that it's kind of like come full circle in a sense that it's not like, it's sort of as like, I feel really like free to like do whatever I sort of like want at this point. Like, and I have like a huge love of like where I come from. And there's a lot of that in here. Like a lot of the graffiti that I did is really a big way in a big part, in a big way, a part of all of this stuff. So. Like all the other pieces, there's a lot of stuff going on on the backside. It's sort of like a psychological, it's sort of like the tormentors in, tormentors in your head in a sense. They're sort of like kind of driving this woman to smoke, I guess, I don't know. But um, there's a lot of like what I call sort of like traditional pots that I do that are about 32 inches. Um, I make a lot of these just sort of like straight up paintings basically on the pots that I really love. These are kind of like taken the place of those sort of like smaller figurative pieces that I was showing you with like lots of different medium. Um, I sort of make, make these pots now. It's a sort of answer to just sort of like something that I'm working on all the time. And I mean, I fire my stuff fairly low. I don't really feel the need to get super crazy or like do any kind of like crazy firing stuff. It's, I keep it really simple to keep my life simple. And I try not to make things that are like incredibly fragile. Like these things are not like incredibly thin or anything like that. They're really like substantial. Um, so these are sort of like the smaller forms that I've been making fairly often um, nowadays. Oh, so this is like an image from my old studio. <laughs> which was literally like a garage. Um, and it was really bananas in there and dark and dank. And it's a huge change to my new studio. Um, but I made a lot of great work in this place. So I was doing a lot of these sort of like platters or bowls that had a lot of 3D stuff built into it. So this is sort of like the end of that piece. Um, and I mean, a lot of my work is like really simplistic and sort of like romantic love or what have you, or just like human relationships and like the difficult elements of human relationships. It's, um, it's fun. So this is another one of those platters that I did with a huge crack in it that I haven't repaired yet. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of my graffiti in this work, which I am really, happy about. This is like a drawing that my daughter did in one of the big platters. Like, it's like about three and a half, or three feet wide. And it was going to be a bigger, taller pot, but it kept falling apart. So I was like, okay, it's just going to be a platter, and I cut it off. But I was like really like frustrated with it, and my daughter was like, oh, I'll, I'll do that drawing for you. <laughs> so I was like, okay, thank you. But, um, so I have that now. It's so cool. I love it. Um, and then I like colored it for her. But, it was pretty cool to do this collaboration. Uh, so these are some of the pieces that I had in my show in 2016. And um, this is like my favorite piece that I did. It's sort of like, it's like five feet tall. Um, and that was insane. Like I made all of this, I made a lot of work within like a six week period. And it was really intense and really physical. But, um, and I'm like amazed that they made it through like Sometimes things like come through without one fucking crack anywhere and some things are just like, what? Like destroyed and I still like have no idea like why. It's, it's like so random. But um, 
this is a piece from the same time period. So it's still sort of like twisting and turning. I mean, there's sort of like this really schizophrenic energy, I feel, um, which I think is a big part of like how I make work. It's sort of like this intense energy of, of just sort of like, I am sort of like a workaholic and it, the imagery is really, it comes from that. It's sort of like this intense need to work. Um, it's almost like too much. So this is like the end piece of that original large one that my daughter was with in the early pictures. Uh, it's like totally weird, but it's sort of like this insanely happy person. Um, but uh, I really like how these came out in the end. And then this is sort of like a really large pot. I was doing a sort of a small series of pots that are about four feet tall. And I mean, it was funny because I had never made anything close to this scale before 2015. And I had a commission to make these two pots that would, that the guy wanted them to be four feet tall. And I was like, oh my God, like there's no way I can do that. And I was so like stressed out about it. And the first two like totally failed. But then after I got the hang of it, it was like, so much easier than I ever would have thought to build on a larger scale. And it just like made me like so immediately happy to sort of like have access to something that was that large in clay. I, um, I had no idea that it would be like not a big deal at all. And then, so I started working like that more and more at that scale. But before that, like the largest thing I had ever made was like 30 inches or something. It was like really, like way under even like um, three feet. So that's sort of like someone for scale, but um, it definitely, and then that's the inside. I think that actually this piece was gonna be like a platter, but then I, I was start, started doing sort of like some 3D stuff down the bottom, but then I skipped it and started making it bigger. But the hearts were sort of like what remained down at the bottom. Um, and then this is a girl, like a double girl with hair. So these are just some of the pieces that were in the show from 2016, but not much has really changed since then. Um, that's sort of like an image. So this is coming from my, this is their like a studio shot from before my show. And um, I think it's nice to sort of like see the, the sort of like dark dungeon of like where you work or just to sort of like tap back into it. It's definitely, I try to show sometimes like install shots and like images from my studio or just to like look at them often because it's nice to see the entire process of just, I mean, I don't know what you guys are doing out of school, but like I spend a lot of time alone, like every day, like in my studio. And it's really different, I feel, when you're a student and you're surrounded by people. But when you, I mean, if you, you're like, end up sort of like hacking out a living at it, you actually spend, or like for me, I spend a large portion of my life just sort of alone in my studio. And it's sort of like a special place. I don't really have a lot of, um, I don't have a lot of help. Like sometimes if I'm having like a big, if I'm pushing through a lot of like large scale pieces, I'll have someone come in and help me because the physical work is just like too much. But I mean, often I'm just sort of building everything by myself and then I have people fire the work for me. But so I think there's like a real strong psychology in, your, in, the, in the studio life that people don't really have access to that just see like the finished work. And it's, for me, it's like a really special place as like for all artists, but it's literally like the inside of a brain for me sometimes. Um, it's just sort of like really chaotic and uh, private. So this is sort of like the inside of a pot. And there's sort of like, I'm really obsessed with my name, <laughs> but I, I totally feel like that comes from like my interest in graffiti and just sort of like tagging and like leaving a remnant of yourself. Um, I think that when you think about art, it's like the object itself is like, your remnant, but I think for me, somehow it's still sort of like my name or something. Um, so I have a lot of 
my name everywhere. Um, so these are like install shots from my show in 2016. Um, it, in LA at my gallery. And that was a really great show because there's all these different scales and um, I mean, for me, it was like nice because I had some like larger pieces on the floor. It's sort of like my dream to have a show of just like everything on the floor. And I'm kind of like getting to that, I feel. But um, so it was sort of like nice to do that. Um, so there's like a lot of work in that show. And then that's my garden at home. It's just like a piece I have in my yard. Sometimes I think like I'm gonna make, <laughs> like if I'm not careful, I'm gonna make like a crazy art garden that um, <laughs> one day I would like to. Um, so that's all, that's the end of my lecture. If anyone has any